This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Bennett and this is the ramble of course and we go until midnight tonight that's midnight up there uh, Eastern Daylight Time and right now it's about 10.06 on the east coast of the United States of America so if you want to adapt to that uh, that'll uh, take you uh, fig- let you figure out exactly where you are in the world and uh, whether we're live or not and whatever if you're on the east coast, west coast, it's uh, nine. It's what? It's seven o'clock at night. What the hell? Anyway, I'm here, and uh, tonight we were supposed to have. Uh, let me let me do something here that I uh, I would like to do just simply because it's uh, it uh, makes my life a little better. Uh, is uh, if for the people who are watching me, because I'm going to be talking for a little bit tonight. I just zoom in here. Hold on a second. Hold on, come on, do this. There we go. And uh, let me see here. Let me put myself into focus, and let me apply that. And then let me do a little tilt here, up and down. Oh, there we go. Up. There we go. And now you've got a good picture of me, right? Okay. All right. I just want to make sure that was all okay. That's for the people who aren't listening to me on the, uh, on, <laughs> who aren't watching me on Facebook Live. However, you can watch me on Facebook Live. Oh, wait a minute. I still have to fix this. Now, hold on a second. Got to get this picture just right, okay? All right. Uh, let me see here. Uh, tilting. I want to tilt down a little bit. There we go. There we go. And if I sit up, uh, uh, yeah, there we go. All right. Trying to get it just right. Okay. There we go. Are you all right? Are you all happy now? Okay. So anyway, um, I was going to have, uh, we were going to have Will Durst tonight, uh, and uh, Will is usually on, and we have video of him and everything, but I got a hold of him last night to make sure he was going to do it, and he said he couldn't because he had been to the dentist and had had some, I guess, oral surgery of some sort, and that he really wasn't in a very talkative uh, way, it, it did not have the ability to talk, okay? So I said, okay, then I'll, um, we'll just uh, uh, have to, you know, um, uh, uh, forego it. And I figured, well, what am I going to do? And, uh, and then I said, well, you stupid moron, number one, you turn on the, uh, on the air light because that's what girlfriend would like. And then uh, you talk and you just uh, do what you do best and that's talk about stuff. Now, I'm not going to look at the camera all that much because I don't need to talk directly to you because this is, after all, an audio show primarily that we do video coverage of. That's the way I like to think of it. Uh, and um, I have been uh, uh, doing this, um, this thing with uh, Facebook Live for a while now, and, and it's been working out okay. I mean, it, it gets us a larger audience. Uh, it... Uh, also allows me to, uh, 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 well, that, that's all it really does. Otherwise, it's useless. <laughs> yes, it's totally useless. But we're going out and everything's fine and there are a lot of you watching. So listen to me and we'll, we'll talk a little bit here. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about, and it, it, it's... I, I talked about it with my with my business manager. I think it was the, just the other day. He called me for one reason or another, and um, uh, and we st- started talking. And uh, it, you know, he's he's a he's a financial guy. He's does. When I first met him, he was doing spreadsheets. You know what those were? These were these sheets. Well, you know what they are if you've ever done any accounting on uh, your computer. Because now they're electronic spreadsheets, but in those days, he had to do them all by hand, and then he had a a adding machine that added up the columns. Now you just type in this material, everything gets added up for you, 
and uh, it, you know he, he it's very it's it's a much simpler operation and you can get more work done than you would normally get done so I reminded him of our lives back in 1980 when he first became my business manager was in 1980 and in about 18 uh, 1981 I think it was uh, <clears throat> I uh, I got a uh, Atari computer now the Atari computer was a very special kind of computer uh, <laughs> it was unlike any other you know how you have like uh, I think something like 80 characters or something across the screen now on computers it only had 40 uh, yes, it only had 40. And uh, I basically used it to play games because you could put cartridges in it and play games, or you could use it like a regular computer. I mean, for whatever a regular computer would do in those days. There were a few uh, text programs. And one day, um, somebody, you know, in those days, of course, everybody was hijacking software because... Quite frankly, it was the beginning of the wild, wild west. And uh, somebody handed me this disc, and on it it said VisiCalc. And I went, what the hell is VisiCalc? And I put it in the computer, and it booted up, and what I saw looked to me like what Gary had been doing with his eyes crossed and the adding machine and the rows of numbers that he had to add and do all of that. And I said, I think this is a spreadsheet. So I called him up and I said, you got to get over here when you get a chance. I got to show you something. And then you tell me what it is, okay? And he says, well, I, you know, I don't know, but I'll try to do it tomorrow and the next day. I said, I would do it sooner than that. I think this is going to interest you. So I remember him coming over and I turned on the computer and he's leaning over my shoulder and as this VisiCalc comes into view, he immediately knows what it is. It looks like a spreadsheet. And I said, here, fool around with it. And he, you know, he figured it out to a certain extent that you could take, you know, numbers, put them in, and then the bottom where you wanted a total, you could tell it what you wanted it to total. And within a very short time, he was using this and he said, we got to get ourselves regular computers. And uh, by regular computers, he meant not an Atari, which only had 40 lines across, but a full born computer. And the only ones available in those days uh, uh, that were of any note was IBM. And IBM had, a, had, had started out doing a PC that didn't have the OS that Bill Gates finally uh, put together for them. But finally, they had come out with the PC DOS machines. And uh, it was, they were pretty good looking little sexy machines. They had a kind of angle to the front and so on. And then they had a monitor you put on top that matched it. And I remember we each bought one. We got a deal because we got three of us who went in on buying these computers. And um, the computers were, uh, if I remember correctly, $3,300 each. Well, what'd you get for $3,300? Well, we got it fully loaded with all the memory you could put into a PC, which there was a maximum of, I believe, it was 640 k and that's why it was so expensive, because we filled it up with all that memory. And what kind of hard drives did it have in it? Hard drives? What's a hard drive? We had two five and a half inch floppy disk drives. And with that, we were living large. And Gary then started using VisiCal to do his, his uh, uh, spreadsheets. And uh, then uh, uh, he learned that because he could do the spreadsheet so fast, he could have more people that he would do taxes and stuff for. <laughs> so rather than just a handful of people that he worked his ass off for, now he could have tons of people that he didn't have to work as hard for because of the, the electronics were now doing it for him. And to me, that was the, VisiCalc is what actually brought the PC into existence. Up until that time, yeah, they had some writing programs and you had some games a couple of people would cobble together. 
But when, once the spreadsheet came along, this was something the office could use, and that really kicked off the computer age. You know, prior to that, prior to, uh, what, 19, I'm talking 1981, you know, if you go back to 73, I think you had the first computer that actually came out, and it, I'm trying to remember what it was called now, but it was, it had to use hard code to make it work and everything. This was a computer that almost anybody could use. I remember, however, that you used PC-DOS. This was the program that, you know, Microsoft came out with and uh, uh, dear Mr. Gates had come up with. And PC-DOS, uh, you used to have like an A prompt, okay? And then you would type in like you, whatever you wanted. Like if you wanted VisiCalc, you would type in, I guess, I think you used to type in VisiCalc or some word before it meaning start VisiCalc and then it would start the program. But there was no graphical user interface like you're used to seeing now. That would be years before that came along. And so I was sitting at home with this computer doing all kinds of little things with it. You know, you couldn't, it was funny, I, if I remember correctly, you couldn't even do things like video with, a, with the early PCs, you know. Uh, and, and there was some audio that I did. I can't remember what I exactly did with the computer. It was more valuable to Gary than it was to me. It wasn't until video started being used in the, uh, in the computer world. And that came to pass in, uh, let me see here, what was the year? I'm trying to figure out now exactly when I, when I started to see this stuff. Around 1986, maybe, the Amiga came out, the Amiga computer. And the Amiga, you know, the Amiga was, at the time, the best computer ever created. Uh, these were people who came from uh, Apple and went over to the company. That, uh, what, what, uh, what, what was the company that uh, the Amiga was done under? I'm trying to remember now. A lot of people can remember these things. I can't. I'm starting to forget. Uh, I'm starting. To, the past starts to fade behind you as you get older. But anyway, the Amiga I was introduced to because uh, I was interested in video. And I read an article somewhere that said the Amiga was capable of passing through full what we called NTSC video. And so I went and bought one. And there were a few little programs. There was a company out in Topeka named New Tech who had a, um, a digital um, um, encoder. In other words, you would take uh, a video. Let's say you had something off a of video, TV, uh, you know, VCR. And you would plug it into the, uh, the digital encoder. And I'm trying to remember what the name was for it. See, all these things are starting to really get very faded in my past. Um, and you would plug it in. And then you would freeze frame the picture, and then you'd go on the program, uh, take a frame of this, and it would, it would literally take a frame of the picture of the video, okay? So now you could take a shot, like stuff off your video and take a single frame. And this company, New Tech, did that. And so I was just hanging around uh, one day with my, my friend, uh, Penn Gillette, and he brought a guy to lunch. Uh, and his name was Brad Carvey. And yes, if the name sounds familiar, Brad Carvey is the brother of Dana Carvey. In fact, uh, the character that Dana Carvey played on uh, Wayne's World was modeled after Brad. And uh, Brad said to me, oh, it's great to meet you, you know. And uh, Penn said, I thought the two of you should meet up. I said, yeah, I want to, want to have been wanting to meet you too. He said, why? I said, I read in like Amiga magazine or whatever, you guys are building something called the Video Toaster? And he said, yeah, I designed it. I helped design it. And I said, any chance you can, you know, hook me up? You know, I'm willing to pay for one. I mean, I just want to see how this thing works. And uh, he, he went, hey, I'll do better than that. Next time they're in town, I'll have... Paul and uh, his uh, uh, Montgomery 
And Tim Jennison, come by and see you. The, Tim Jennison owns the company. Paul works with him, and they, they're, they're doing this thing together. And within a couple of weeks, Brad Carby had uh, put me in contact with them, and we're all sitting there at lunch. And I'm just saying, this is, if you can do what you say you're going to do. Now, what, what the video toaster was, because the name video toaster, what does that mean? Yeah, you, you make toast, and it has pictures of TV stars on it. No. What the video toaster was, was the first card that you could put into a computer and then it would be able to switch if you had cameras hooked up to it, cameras, or if you had several video machines going, it could fl go between the videos. And it also did things like flip the picture over and do wipes and things like that. And... Um, they said, it's going to be ready pretty soon, and when we get one, you'll be the first one to have one. And soon enough, I get a call one day from, uh, from Paul, who then become a very good friend of mine. He said, hey, listen, we're ready. When are you going to be home? And I said, uh, tomorrow afternoon. I'll, I'll have the whole afternoon just scheduled for you guys. And they came over, and they came with this box, and they pull out this card, and they say, where's your Amiga? And I said, over there. And they slip this thing into Amiga, the Amiga, and they say, where are your uh, video editing machines? Because I had two video editing machines. And I said, over there. And they said, let's plug those in. Okay, because they had, uh, well, I won't explain all of it, but they had time-based correctors in them. And you needed time-based correctors to, to flip between pictures. And we started up both machines, and they start clicking, and the picture is flipping out, and it's flipping in and it's doing wipes, and it's doing all of this. And I'm drooling because, you know, all along, I've been using these video machines to edit video of vacations and things like that. And um, finally, here's this thing, this marvelous, marvelous toy. Uh, and they brought a guy with them who had invented yet another part of this thing, and it was a... Uh, it was a, a, a 3D rendering program called Lightwave that just kind of came with it. And the guy taught me how to kind of use that so I could make 3D models and things like So this was really the beginning of the video age where computers were concerned. What these guys did started a whole revolution. And it certainly started a revolution for me because then another company came out with a machine that I could program the Amiga to do all the switching so I could then put in and out points on the editing. And then if I wanted to fade or dissolve or whatever, I would program that in and then I would just push buttons and this thing would go back and forth and it would assemble a final video based upon all the, you know, the ins and out points. It, it was, uh, it, it's too much for me to explain to you if you don't know video, but what, what you should know is that this literally changed the whole nature of video, okay, and of television. This took television, and it democratized it. It put it on a desktop in a computer that I think the Amigas maybe went for. If you got the big expensive one, you paid about 3000 for it, but normally you could get one for about 1500 and then the video toaster was only $1,200. I think they first started selling at about $750. So that with for about $3,000, you had all the gr grammar of television. Now, when I talk about the grammar of television, the grammar of television is, 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 are things like the wipes, you know, and the dissolves, and the cutting from one thing to another. And the graphics, this thing also could do titles. It did graphics as well. So all of a sudden you had all the grammar of television at your disposal for somewhere under $3,000. And th this was an absolute godsend. This changed the whole industry. Up until then, um, things like this didn't exist. And how did it get invented? Here's how it got invented. Uh, Tim Jennison, who's a brilliant, brilliant guy, uh, came up with the ideas. He was driving down the Pacific Coast Highway in California. And he was just, you know, he, was, he, he had this place, New Tech, where they had come out with the digit grab thing. I can't remember what the, the full name of it was. 
And, and he was trying to think, what, what, what could be my next new product? And he said, you know what I would love to do? I'd love to be able to take a television picture and just flip it over, make it flip. And when he got back to Topeka, he called up Brad Carvey. And Brad Carvey, who was a genius, came out. And one night they worked. And within one night, one evening, I am told, he, Tim Jennison, and Paul Montgomery all sat there doing, you know, drinking tons of Mountain Dew, which is the national soft drink of the technology people because it keeps them awake. And they, they, he, Tim always remembers the first time he saw that picture flip on the screen. And they said, wow, have we got something here? And they said, well, we haven't got anything yet, but we could sure, this is a beginning. And they came up with the video toaster. And ask anybody in the business back then, that was the thing that completely was a seed changer where television production was concerned. And they won uh, Emmys for it, and they won accolades for it, and the company did really well. And New Tech is still in business as of to this day. Uh, they have a picture of a thing called the, uh, 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 the TriCaster. And the TriCaster is the very uh, kind of equipment that we used when we did um, uh, the, the TV show of what became GabNet, which we called the Great American Broadcast. When I get, went off the air and we went to a studio and we did that, we used, the tri we used it. And if you go on to, uh, uh, we have it up on... Uh, on Roku, a lot of those old shows, l just look at what New Tech is able to do today. And they're still a great company, and they're still great people. And um, the only thing I miss is my friend Paul. I became great friends with a guy by the name of Paul Montgomery, and uh, he was, we were so, he was, I, I don't think I've really been as close to somebody in my lifetime as I have been to Paul. And uh, Paul started play TV with me. And uh, as we were starting to get it going, um, he died of a heart attack, 39 years old. And you know, there's very few people in my lifetime that have ever really believed in me and who had the power and the money to help me live out my dreams. And his whole thing was, he's, when, I, when I got fired from uh, Live 105 in San Francisco, I called him up, I said, I got fired at Live 105 in San Francisco. And first words out of his mouth were, good, now we can do something together. And immediately put me on salary, and we started coming up with doing what was then the first ever internet television broadcast network. Okay, we did 12 hours of programming a day, and I dare anybody to say they did that first, because they can't. We were way out front. That's the problem. That's what I learned, ladies and gentlemen, and it's a lesson that I hope you will take home with you as well. Don't be the first on your block to do something. That only has bragging rights, but it does, you never, you know, you never see the, the full uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? You never get the full benefit of it because being the first one to do something, uh, it, it's you want to be the second guy to do it who then takes what the first guy did and improves on it, okay? Uh, it's just like GabNet. I mean, we're the first to probably do this kind of programming where we have a citizens panel and uh, probably somebody will do it eventually and make it successful because certainly we haven't met, met with any with any great success with this. We certainly have met with uh, uh, a lot of uh, critical approval, but uh, you know the industry is yet to go along with this whole thing. Well, anyway, look, it is time for us to open up the Skype lines and talk to people. You know how this little drill works, folks. We have here on this uh, program uh, a, the ability to take not one, not two, but as many people as we possibly can talking to each other. Now, we try to limit that to somewhere around nine other people beside myself. Uh, wait a minute, hold on a second. Mike is the first one calling in tonight. Here, we'll show you exactly how this looks. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. There is, uh, there's Mike. Hi, Mike. How are you? Hello. Good, good. Yeah. 
good news. I went to the doctors today. Got you my d- you didn't test. listen to anything I was talking about, did you? No. I was, okay. Uh, so so phone, what you do? What you somebody. do is you then you then come on to the program, and and you just a little, and I went to the doctor today, and you have no comment about what I was talking about for the last half hour. Oh, I can say a few things about Trump, but I, I'll and, save it. No, for that, I wasn't talking about Trump. Oh my God! You're kidding. No. I'm surprised. I have a, no. Uh, too bad you missed the first half hour. Too bad you don't listen. <laughs> True. You know, I kind of feel insulted. I'm sorry. Yeah. So you went to the doctor today. Don't let me make you feel bad. You went to the doctor today. <laughs> Got my lab test back. It says everything's good. Well, that's cholesterol's exciting. Fine. That's, that's cholesterol's fine, which I'm surprised. Everything else is fine. Diabetes is, is, is excellent. Actually, I went down a couple of points. Now, you see, Way I down. thought that when you said I went to the doctor today, your next thing would be, and, and he told me some terrible stuff, or I've got this problem, no, or I got no, this or no, that or the news, other thing. It's good you news, know. Hmm? It was all good news today. Oh, I'm, gr- I'm glad it's all good news, you know. You know, I'm surprised. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. So that's that, that's it, huh? That's it. I noticed that Phil was coming online. He hasn't started calling yet, however. Uh, but uh, uh, here we go. There we go. There's. Phil. Oh, good. Good. Okay. Yeah. I bet I bet Phil was listening to what I was saying for the last half hour, weren't you, Phil? Yeah, I, I got a TriCaster. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they cost something like a good one, a, a decent one to do some good grand. production with. It's going to cost just fifteen grand, you know. Yeah. But that's still Ouch. cheap. That's still cheap for what it does. If you go back and look at those TV shows we did, if you remember any of them, they look uh, gorgeous. Well, I, 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 I didn't uh, stay in contact with you back then. If you, if, if you go to the Roku and you go to, there is a whole thing of some of those shows. Hi. Oh, okay. Hi, Charlene. How are you? Of those shows, uh, and they, they, you know, you'll see that the, the, for, for you know, I think you can get it for like nine grand's the cheapest. You can do just the most amazing chroma key shit you've ever seen in your life. Really? I did a whole virtual uh, sets and everything. I, I looked and I saw toasters online you could buy for uh, like 350 bucks. Video toasters? <laughs> yeah. 350 bucks? I'm, su- I'm surprised there are any Ataris working to use them with. Really, <laughs> you know. Uh, let me see here. Here, here comes uh, here comes Rob Alfano. Hello, Rob. How are you? Good. How are you? Do you do you ever remember the video toaster? You work television. So I I know of it because I have friends who had it. Yeah. Um, it it never really it didn't get it didn't get um, professional play. I mean, people didn't use it in professional video. It was, uh, you know, not like the TriCaster, you know, that's, you know, real high quality video. Yeah. I don't think that I, nobody really used a video toaster for, you know, even cheap cable networks weren't using a video toaster. It did some nice things. But uh, and you, you really yeah. brought me back. I start hearing you talk about TBCs and I'm like, whoa, right. well, I haven't the thing about is TBC the, in forever. The thing is, the business never used the video toaster because it really did not. It did have a good NTSC output, but it didn't. It didn't have the. Uh, uh, they didn't want to believe in it enough because well, could, because well because they be. thought of, hey, hey you, wait a minute a twelve hundred and fifty dollar thing you put in a, in a cheap computer can do all the stuff you do in a TV studio. Yep, yeah, yeah it I, can. That could really be. I mean, everybody was using. You know, CMX editing and Grass Valley switchers and well, the you other, know, all the other high thing. end stuff that cost millions of dollars. Well, the other point here, and and uh, this is the reason why I think a lot of them turned it down. Is a lot of them knew deep down this would put them out of business. You know that if, if we went this, if you could go this cheap and do TV, th- there was going to be some prices to pay here. What it did yeah. is democratize television. It let People like myself, if you go onto my website today, my Facebook page today, go down one. Curtis D. Martini has put something on that I edited, 
that was a promo for Live 105, and that was all edited with the video toaster. And you can see what it could do, you know, with credit crawls and the whole thing, you know. So it was, it was for its day, it was... It was industrial. We would call that industrial uh, yeah, video yeah. as opposed to commercial professional video. Uh, back in the day, anyway. But today, I mean, today, today the changed. TriCaster uh, literally replaces everything in a television oh, control yeah. room. I mean, you, 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 remember the, you remember the TV show we did, don't, sure. don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, how good did that look? Oh, yeah. yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, you could. Bro, the, you had me fooled that I thought you guys put a set up. Yeah. Yeah. In the beginning. Yeah. Most people so, thought yeah, it was no, a set. I was like, yeah. And then I saw you start fooling around with it. I'm like, ah, oh, okay, it's green screen. And yeah. <laughs> for the beginning, I was like, wow, where the hell did I found a studio with this really nice set in it? <laughs> yeah. And and, there was... and and he said Tony came and built it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. yeah. I remember those days. And then we I had got... a friend who was a technical director who actually had an Amiga computer, and he, he got a video toaster. And he was he always talked about it. You know, this is really cool. This is really cool. And, uh, you know, it, I never I, saw it, one. As I say, what it did, it democratized television. It, it allowed everybody, uh, the average person, to have the tools at their hand to use the grammar of television. And, and that was, in and of itself, I think, revolutionary. Now, of course, TV is in the hands of everybody. I'm using a little switching program here. Look at what I do, you know. I've even TV, got, I, you don't need to do anything anymore. I've even have. got it now so I can now, super OBS. that. Look at that, folks. Your, put, your OBS, you said, will allow you to use a green screen. Yeah. Uh, I have, uh, do you have a piece of fabric or something to throw up? And, no, no, uh, no. See if no, no. I, I, I mean, because, because I don't have that fabric, and because I don't care about green screening, I haven't uh, looked at that sure. part of the program to suss it out. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, you have to put up lights. You have enough issues with power, right? The last he thing said you need he, is he said he didn't need lights uh, with his program. That he could just work it off the uh, existing. No, you need you the, need you need, you need decent lights. decent yeah. lighting on the background. But you know, I have enough lighting in here that it would it would take care of the background. But I'd have to put up a background. I'd have to put up. If the, you don't. You if know. you don't do the lighting right, you don't get any depth. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's no depth of field. And you don't get separation. Right That's what I mean by depth, yeah. 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 Uh, you know, I, I, I got a Cuisinart toaster with a convection yeah. button. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. That democratized toast. Yeah. <laughs> you know what changed in TV, though? Everything went Mac, right? Everybody was doing TV with Mac, but today they're all back to PC again. Why is that? Yeah. Uh, the the latest and greatest, and I'm tr- God. I, the name right now it escapes me. The name of the company that is doing the is it the Avid? Maybe it's all PC Isn't based. Avid a porno uh, producer? No, no, that's vivid. Uh, no. <laughs> The uh, the the it, Avid, it, it was Avid, all Avid, Mac Avid, for the longest time. Yeah, well, Avid made the first uh, video editors, I think, if I remember correctly. Yeah, all and and editors. I think they're still around today. And and uh, most of the most of the production that happens in television now is back on PC. In fact, yeah. Avid even goes back further than than uh, using digital, because it went back to when you had the tapes and you'd mount them on different machines, and then you would do all your editing on the Avid, and then it would start the machines and stop the machines and do all the editing for you once right. you once you got it. And then when digital came in, they then went to that. And now Avid is just all digital, much like Premiere Pro is, much like uh, Final Cut Pro is, you know. Yeah, control rooms look very different today than, than they did when I was in TV. Yeah. They really changed. Well, everything's yeah. stored on hard drives now. Yeah, yeah. So. everything is is digital now. It's not like, I mean, I used to rack up one inch machines and do editing with one inch machines. I think by the end of the Letterman show, if I remember Shecky telling me correctly, every camera was on a different uh, different track, different hard drive, and then they would do a final mix while they were doing the show, but and then they all of them were isolated. 
so that they yeah. if they if they missed a shot or something like that, they could go back in and and uh, uh, and you know take the isolated that been, the isolated. That would have been expensive to do back in the day. Oh, back in the day, that would have been incredible. Now it's just expensive. now it's just more more hard drive space. That's right. That's right. So you know, I mean, that's uh, hello, Jeff. Uh, so, uh, te- you know, television has changed a great deal in that respect. And oh, yeah. uh, uh, but it also what what it's done is it's made it possible for everybody like myself, for instance, to do a full blown TV show like I did when we first started Gabnet and I, uh, and to make it I, look like a real TV show. When I first started directing, we used to have to I used to direct this national sports show a desk show a news desk show like like sports center yeah. uh, for sports channel america and we used to have to build you know the graphics that go over your shoulder the right. box graphics right. i used to have to build like baseball season you'd have yeah. to build the mets and the and the cubs and you'd have to put the logos in and actually freeze everything and store them on the on the on the uh the ess and uh and you know just go through the whole night's rundown and just build all the graphics and do all that. It was like a four. You had to have the switcher. He had to do his part. You had to have the guys in the back getting the logos and putting them up. And I mean, it was now you do that on a computer. You could build those in in no time well, flat. It's amazing. Uh, I mean, that's. Oh, well, I'll, I'll show you how. Talking fa- nineteen ninety. I don't know what nineteen ninety ninety one ninety two. I'll show. Time I'll, show I'll show people how fast you can do that. There we go. I just put up GabNet Live above all of you as a graphic. So you see, so unbelievable. I don't. I, mean, I don't see it. Yeah. Oh, oh, at the bottom. Oh, no. there it is. Now yeah. it came up. Yeah. yeah. So right. you know, pretty- I mean, that's that's the kind of thing we're talking about. It, and that pro- this program is free. Okay. And it's yeah. it's. So yeah. what was the testing that you were doing? Uh, that was it yesterday. Oh, or? I was having problems with live live stream uh, again. You know, just as I start <clears throat> to love them, I hate them. Uh, <laughs> yesterday, I tried to. Uh, I took Facebook off, not so I couldn't feed Facebook because I wanted to try feeding uh, video live. to uh, to uh, uh, YouTube, and oh. you can't have both installed because Facebook doesn't like to be installed with something else. So I then tried that and then I went back and I tried to use the Facebook and it I told it to load it in and every time I would it load it in it would say authorization successful and yet I never got it to come up. I can't get the the Facebook live portion of that to come up. So I wrote to the live stream and they wrote me back saying uh, we 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 aren't getting the full picture. Could you could you send us a, a screenshots? And I wrote them back and I said, I told you everything that's wrong. I told them in great detail every problem that I had with it. And, mm. uh, and, and I said, and uh, graphics, if I sent you screenshots, they, may, they wouldn't matter anyway. You know? Yeah. And it was, uh, so we'll see what I get back as a reply. But it could be their, their, their relationship of their machines to Facebook or something like that because it's letting me use, it's letting me use YouTube. Nice. And I can use live stream if I use another thing on there to go through. But still, I can't get all of this on unless I've got another monitor and another card and all of that. And, you know, it's, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. Well, maybe yeah. Uh, Marjorie will bring home another computer. Uh, uh, no, I don't need another computer. What I need is I need another graphics card in here and I need a, uh, to use another monitor, which I do have. But I don't have the room for it. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. you know, so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have to move into a bigger apartment, I suppose. <laughs> uh, take, over, take over the living room. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, you know, just switch, switch out. Hello, Charlene. We haven't seen you in a while. Oh. Well, you know, I have um, like a medical issue today. Uh, you know, the uh, crown stuff that you go through. Can you see that? What? It's, it's horrible. It's so ugly. I'm yeah. like a hillbilly. I'm missing a tooth there. So it's oh, really? <laughs> Why, the crown fall out? Well, it's like a 20-something-year-old crown like yeah. on an eye tooth. And they said that probably decay leaked in there, and it caused the tooth to fracture. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. That's very common. Yeah, so then they did a pulp- pulpectomy or pulpotomy or something. 
it, which they only do that to me in New Jersey at the uh, yeah. hospital. I don't know what's wrong with your video, but you're you're, you're not oh. smooth. You're kind of like every other really? frame or something. Yeah. It's the okay. Of preaching. It's okay. Could be the iPhone. Uh, are you the using iPhone. the iPhone? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't this great? People can use an iPhone and you see their video. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. But this was like a two-day thing. They had me at 7 o'clock in the morning. I had to come in as an emergency. And I had to wait till 10.30 before they even looked at me. Then they threatened to keep me there after lunch and even longer. But then they threw me out and sent me home and told me to come back tomorrow as an emergency. I've got to open my mouth tomorrow and say, am I going to be doing this for the whole visit? You know, Because you know a crown has a lot of visits, right? Well, well I, I don't know. I, you know, here's what happens. Here's what happens. If your tooth fractured, they're mm -hmm. probably going to have to pull that thing. Well, you know what they're going to do? Play around with it, and then I'll probably need a dental implant or yeah, something. Like and, yeah, and, and the dental implant, you know, you begin to wonder. I'll tell you what, what happened when I, when I had my two dental implants. Anybody else here had dental implants? No. I have like yeah. three you, or four of them. Three or four of them. I had two of them. Uh, and every time when they would uh, uh, pull the tooth or whatever, I would then go to my other dentist, and she would make me a phony tooth that would go in there that I would use for you know uh, in, in, about you know temporary for six months. And I really liked that temporary. And I last time I was into my uh, I was into my uh, dentist. I said to her, I said, let's say this tooth goes bad. And we have to pull it. Can I live on one of those temporaries? She said, yeah, sure. You might have to replace it every couple of years. But, yeah. I said, Don't it's they only... call it a bridge? No, it's not a bridge. It it's no. just snaps right they in. They to give me a flipper. But now they're going to take the old crown and make a temporary out of that. Oh, I see. Well, anyway, what, what, what happened was is they, they uh, literally, uh, uh, she said that, uh, she said, yeah, you could live with that. And I said, you know something? Here's 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 the price tag, right? On a on a on a on a implant. In case anybody's seeing oh, it, you know what I'm about to say, don't you, Jeff? First of all, they got to pull they got to pull the tooth. That's going to cost you nine hundred and fifty dollars. Maybe a little cheaper, maybe a little more, depending on which guy you go to or woman you go to. Then uh, it's about two hundred and fifty uh, twenty five hundred dollars to uh, do the implant itself, the actual implant, okay? Then you've got to have a tooth put on there, okay? So that's another 2000 How much are we up to now? We're approaching 5000 I think, maybe more. Yeah. Five is my number. Five is your number? Five was, my, five was my number on one tooth, a little higher on the other, because the first one they didn't have to pull because I had a tooth that was so loose that it self-extracted itself. Is that your canine? Uh, right, right, right in here. Yeah. Uh, listen, I think implants are terrific. And, and uh, you know, root canals, we used to think were terrific, but the reason you're having a problem there, uh, Darlene, Charlene. Is, uh, Charlene, Darlene, Charlene is because um, the um, uh, what do you call it? the root canals? Some of them go bad, and they fracture. You know, and so no matter how much you think that that's going to last forever now, not really. You know, and so uh, eventually you start seeing your teeth falling apart because the last, huh? The last root canal I had, which was fairly recent, yeah, uh, was basically painless. Uh, and, you know, except for the fact that I had to sit there, and it wasn't that bad. It, it no, was pretty much root painless. Root canals are painless. Most, most dentistry is painless. Once they get the, the, uh, uh, the needle in you and they yeah. start numbing you, you're not going to feel a damn thing. That's not the point. What hurts is the $5,000. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what hurts is when I, when I, first, you know, I, I first went to my dentist, here, it was like $1,500 for a crown. Now it's somewhere up around $1,750. I remember when I used to get crowns for like $750 a piece. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just everything's gone up. And so when you get a, 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 an implant, you're going to pay $5,000. He's got four implants in his mouth, Jeff. That's uh, $20,000 sitting there in his mouth. 
you know. No. Mm. I, I'm just like, nice. uh, I'm really upset because they have me going up there, and it's like I, they think I have all afternoon. They won't give me an appointment. They have me as an emergency. I don't know what's going on. But well, they saw you. They saw you when you first started having problems with it. So yeah. give, them, give them credit this for that. This is not covered by insurance, right? This is uh, an out-of-pocket procedure. God only knows what they're going to do. They haven't talked about that yet. Well, out-of-pocket. Insurance, uh, dental insurance is only about $1,500 a year. And when it comes to implants, they don't cover that at all or any part of that right. at all. And then they, uh, with with something like what she's got, yeah, they'll pay for 50% for crowns and whatever. But once you get up to your $1,500, you're paying everything. You know? Well, I, I remember uh, when I was covered under my ex's insurance for dental. She, uh, yeah. I don't have dental insurance. But uh, when I was covered under that, uh, the doctor used to do half of the work in December and then uh, other stuff in January, so you could really uh, maximize, you know, the both oh, years. Like season or <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, with a, with a, with an implant, you had to have the tooth pulled, and then they got to wait three months. Mm -hmm. Then right. they put so in, but like then they put, then they put in the implant, and they got to wait another three months until you yeah. can, you know, the stuff grow, the bone grows over it, and uh, <laughs> yeah, they do a bone graft. I think they charge you a couple hundred bucks for that. You know, I, by the time you're through, you you've made you gotten somebody a, a yacht. You know, you know the I'm machine. having anxiety attacks. And this is why this is why I say that I don't want just uh, single payer health care. I want single payer dental. I had a friend that worked for this company called Ivaclar Vivident, and they made the machines that uh, that made the uh, the tooth from the three day three D rendering, uh, and and it would make the tooth. Right. Those machines were one hundred and sixty five thousand dollars. Uh, you know, so okay, that's let, one of the let's reasons. go back. Let's go back, though. Yeah, about let, 10, 10, 10 teeth, and it's paid for. <laughs> let, let, let's go back. Oh, let's go back. Oh, twenty five years. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, my girlfriend at the time, in order to get herself through college, was working at a dental place, and her job was to deliver. Uh, the dental appliances, you know, the the crowns and so on that were being made for these various dentists and so oh, on. Oh, she go to the lab, pick them up. It, well, she worked for the lab, and then oh, she oh, would okay. uh, take them out and everything. And I said, oh, "How much do these things really cost?" And she said, "Every dentist who you go to who puts a crown in your mouth is upping the price a hundred percent to for that crown." In other words. If you were paying seven fifty for a crown, which I was in those mm -hmm. days, it only cost him three twenty five. Well, you know. uh, in in the retail business, when you go buy a piece of furniture, for instance, uh, that's that's the markup. Well, I you mean, know? yeah, that's the markup. But my feeling is, uh, I think that's too much of a markup for something where health is concerned. And and let's let's not forget, this is a health issue. I mean, people who don't have good teeth are mm. unhealthy people, you know. Uh, and and uh, let's say you got a guy who's missing his front tooth, and now he wants to go in and get a job. Who the fuck's going to hire him? You know? Somebody that doesn't need a guy that can whistle. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> but, you know, so, I mean, I, I think that that should be taken care of, too. I think that we're, we're limiting ourselves. I mean, especially, I think that... Uh, Healthcare plans should take care of dental problems where the health of the individual is involved. Well, uh, now, what happens if the guy lost his teeth because he never brushed them? You know, and uh, it wasn't, or he smoked. It wasn't a matter of uh, he got in a car you, accident. You know, you're and always, got you're always out trying. You're, o you're always trying to blame the individual, but you've had root canals. You, you, well, let me just ask you: How many root canals have you had, Phil? Uh, four, maybe five. Uh-huh. I've had maybe candy six. Did you eat? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What 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 did you what, you what if you hadn't eaten all that candy, if you hadn't eaten all that sugar uh, in your lifetime? I, I think it was uh, stress. I was biting down. Uh, oh, well then you didn't go to the, the dentist early rocking. enough to I cracked some teeth. Yeah, well then you I, should have gone to the dentist earlier so he could have given you a bite plate, but it's all your fault, Phil. Well, yeah, of course. But you know, I haven't you had a cavity. Have a psychiatrist. I haven't had a cavity in 30 years, maybe longer. You know, uh, it's it's uh, but there are fillings in my tooth. Well, I haven't been in a cavity for ten, crack. so you know what? Yeah. Th things crack. You know, your teeth crack. 
uh, we, we're getting older. You bite oh, down now, on now that, uh, Yeah, but well, all I'm saying is if somebody if somebody smokes or somebody, uh, they eat candy, you know. I mean, come on. All I'm saying is these are things that we want to do for our people so they're healthy. You know, we don't want – do you want a sick country? I mean, it is a sick country. It's pretty sick as it is. Uh, you're pretty <laughs> and sick getting sicker. Yeah. And getting sicker by the day. Now, can I ask you guys, where is Al Gore from? Because I Tennessee. watched that uh, – Tennessee. Where? Tennessee. 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 Okay, because he had kind of like a draw. I was watching CNN. Yeah. You know, he had that uh, town hall on uh, global warming. And I never knew he had kind of like a drawl when he talks. Well, he he, like, he oh, looks like Rodney Dangerfield, people said. Yeah, a little bit. Well, his hair <laughs> looks different now, you know, yeah. than it did. But there's a part two now to, uh, what is it again? Uh, Inconvenient the, Truth. It's called Inconvenient yeah, right. Sequel. part two now. Yeah. Because I, I believe in global warming. I couldn't believe some of these fishermen and stuff that, they, they're fishermen and they don't believe in global warming. They don't see it, they said, while they're fishing. And, well, you, you know, know I, 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 people have the wrong idea about global warming. They think it's something you physically feel or see. Right. But, right. but it is something that eventually is affecting the planet, slowly but surely. And we I have, hate that it's political, though. Like, if you're a Democrat, they believe in it. If Republican, there is none. Well, it's I mean, it's a, we have to believe that a Republican congressman from Podunk is smarter than a Nobel Prize winning uh, scientist, you know? I mean, uh, uh, I, it, it's almost a, ref, a repudiation of science itself. Right. It's, it's, we, po we politicize science. If, you know, the, the politics is more important than actual science and more important than actual a lot of things. We Your politicize, time. yeah, we politicized uh all of the big issues are politicized. Uh, the the about problem it. is not that it's there's global warming and we have to do something about it. There we go. The problem is a redistribution of funds from uh, wealthier countries to uh, those up and coming countries that are uh, getting into manufacturing and, and so forth. And what they want is they have this fund and they want the uh, 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 countries that are now producing products and uh, products to um, fund uh, these other countries. And I, I think it's a boondoggle. Uh, you know, there, there's really, they're just throwing money uh, at uh, underdeveloped countries, uh, saying that it's in the, in the interests of stopping global warming. But um, it just does, it, it just seems like it's a redistribution of income and, uh, and not a, uh, a true effort to stop global warming. If, if you, so if, that, if that, you that, that, that's, your, that's your argument against the existence of global warming. No, that's my argument against the existence of the, the way the political uh, genre is dealing with global warming. I say go clean the beaches, stop polluting, don't uh, you know, uh, drive cars that, uh, that have less pollution. Uh, clean up the oceans. Well, why don't you? Do, why don't we? Why don't we pass a law like England just did by the year? What is it? Twenty 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 forty. Twenty forty. There yeah. will be no more gas cars produced in England. We'll be allowed to drive on the uh, outside of existing cars. But well, no, I don't no think more there'll be cars that you drive in twenty forty. I, I think by twenty forty, uh, the the days of uh, operating your own vehicle are over. Oh, what? what, what, what what's going to replace yeah. it? self-driving cars well uh, th that that's not what we're I mean, saying phil we're talking about the propulsion method i i understand but the propulsion method. even if you're not driving the fucking if you're not electric. if you're not driving the fucking car then it, something's propelling it and what they're going to do is do away with gas propelled automobiles well uh you know i'm thinking about my car is worth more now than it ever has been, and I've been driving it for seven years, and I have 120,000 miles on it. And I'm looking at a Toyota Mirai, uh, the hydrogen car. Uh, I, you know, and I, I'm going to wait just a little while longer, and uh, because they stopped making my model, and it's very popular. Yeah. And, and you can so. stop and get hydrogen just about anywhere. Well, uh, and yeah, kind of, uh, well, in the Bay Area, 
And in Los Angeles, they're going to set up a number of stations. They haven't actually released the car yeah. yet. And, and let's but, say, but let's say you suddenly want to take your car to Nevada or to Wyoming, where they don't uh, have hydrogen. I I may not be able to do that. Uh, and, and then your the car, car and then your car yeah. is a total waste of time. Well, then maybe I'll get two cars, but. You know the the thing is, uh, it's, uh, is it called a Hindenburg? What are you going to do? You're going to drive it all the way to exactly. Wyoming. Exactly. Try to get halfway to Wyoming, and when it peters out, take a plane back to your other car. Well, is I that... never drive to Wyoming. If I'm going to go to Wyoming, I get in a plane. But you know the the thing is, uh, with these uh, hydrogen cell cars, uh, first of all, they're giving you three years of free fuel. Uh, as part of it, and also there's a five or seven thousand um, dollar tax credit, uh, and so you know you can lease it for three years. Uh, Twelve thousand miles a year is all you're allowed. Uh, I guess if you go over, you can pay, but uh, it's it it's a really interesting concept, and I'm I, I think I'd like to be part of it. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. You, you have a good time. Uh, <laughs> Uh, a Toyota Hindenburg. I, I would. I would just like to see electric. <laughs> yeah, uh, really. it, just, it puts. Uh, well, it, it, I, it I had lunch. I had lunch with uh, Albert yesterday, and we were talking about cars. And he was thinking of getting this new Tesla that's like thirty-five thousand dollars or something. Yeah, yeah. The new one. Yeah. And, and, is it? Yeah. Yeah. And, it's and a waste. Yeah, that was it. And he said that uh, you know, I said to him, I said, but you know, the problem is, I, I would not feel secure in an electric car because of the ability to recharge it, okay? And that all, all of a sudden I'm out somewhere and I'm out further than I can go in. Where do I get electric? And they say, he says, well, it does have a, a thing where on the screen, if you're running low on electricity, oh, it, 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 it shows you where to go to charge it up. Okay? It also charges itself while it's driving. Does it? Yeah, and there's something else that happens, like a Prius, which is a hybrid. Uh, well, when you step on the brakes, it charges the right. uh, charges. That's one of the back. ways. There are many ways that those cars recharge themselves while they're driving. They don't publicize that. I drove a Volt, a Chevy Volt. I have a a guy came to work one day. I'll and get to you in a talking. second, Mike. Yeah, go ahead. Keep going. I got to, we got to talking about cars, and he said, "Yeah, I drive a Volt," and I said, "Oh, I'd love to see it." Took me out to the parking lot, and he goes, here, take it for a ride. It's like driving a golf cart, right? It's yeah. quiet, and it's just this weird there's, thing. There's, there's a Cadillac that's built on that body called, uh, yeah, it was a 2016 model, and I liked it. I saw it on the freeway, and I went into the Cadillac dealer to, to, to look at it, and they said, no, 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 now we have a four-door. We don't have that two-door one anymore, and it was really good looking. It was called an EVR or something like that, and they only made it that in 2016. I just think that, and, that these cars, uh, the, 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 high, the cars, uh, electric cars, should have a motor sound. It sounds like a car motor because I hear it's quite distracting when you first start to get into one of those yeah, things, and you and you it come is. to a stop and it, you feel like your engine died on you. you know? It's an Auga horn. It's the same thing. I have this stupid Ford Escape. My yeah. company car is a Ford Escape, and they have this feature in it that when you come to a stop, the engine cuts out. Put your foot on the brake, and the engine cuts out. <laughs> Take your foot off the brake, it starts and it goes, and it's supposed to save gas. I don't know what they call it. I can't think of the term that they call it, but it, I hate it. And, uh, you know, I know uh, I, everybody I work with has a Ford Escape or a Ford Fusion or whatever car they chose. We all have the same complaint. And there's a button. Yeah. As soon as I start the car, if I remember, click, disable. I hate it. I think it's annoying that the car, if I'm in traffic and I want to get going, you, you I, should. I, you know I, what I you need should to know have. That motor's there. What I you, need to pull what, out. What you should have is the option. You do have the option as a button, but it resets itself every time you you start the car. Oh, so God. every time I start the car, when I first come to a stop, the car shuts off. I go, oh, and I press the button, and it happens yeah. there. You uh, think Mike, I've been driving it for a year now? You think I'd remember? My, Mike had his yeah. hand up a while my, ago. My neighbor, my neighbor has an uh, electric car. This thing is very, very quiet. Pick up is nice. But the only thing I don't like about it, you take a car into one of those charge places where you can charge up your car, it's like 80% you can fill up, you know, charge your battery. But I'm thinking to myself, does that wreck your battery? Uh, sure. No, the new batteries don't have memories anymore. Right. 
Right. Uh, so yeah, so it's not a uh, it's not an issue. But uh, but, 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 know, but the but question is, is to, but to step on it though. God dang, anything has good. How, pick well, up how long thing. does it take to charge these things? Uh, 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 Albert was saying that if you get a fast charger, <laughs> which costs a little more for your home, but a fast charger can be done in like a half hour, forty five minutes. Do you well, have you heard still, that? Re- if you think about that, say you want to take a trip down to visit me in Virginia, and you're coming from New York. Yeah. How long is it going to take you to get there? You're going to stop for two hours while your car charges? Yeah, that's Tesla, right. If you, if, that's if what... you run out of uh, out of electric, Tesla has a service, and they'll come out to your uh, to your vehicle and they'll charge it. But you and know, still, you're you, sitting you, by you the side something? of the road for but two hours. It happen, but you're not stuck. Well, maybe you're not stuck, but it's still an inconvenience no matter which did. way you put it. And the fact is, the fact is that really, if you're going to have a electric car, you should have another car as well. In other words, yeah. you use the electric car for your wife to take trips to the grocery store, to go across town to go to a movie or something like that. But you, you, if you're going to take a long trip, you take the other car with the gas and you use that one. Plus, I asked, I asked Albert how much, because he's done some research on this, because he was very much into Tesla, how much it costs to recharge uh, uh, a car. And he Isn't said... is free for it, the first few years? No, no. You, you're hooked, it's hooked to your electric in your apartment. No, no, no. Your oh, my house. God, in the house? Stations. No, no, no. But if you're going to charge it at home, um. it's going to cost about... Uh, Gas, as he said, it's something like two twenty. It costs something like two twenty, one twenty five, per equal gas gallon. Yeah. To you charge. Know what I pay today for gas. What? Three thirty five. Really? Holy crap! You guys are paying that much? Well, they have a lot. Of, they have a lot of taxes Not in here. California. Uh, wow. Well, I got premium, but I, I it's California Union seventy six three thirty five. Oh, premium. We're paid two seventy five for premium, but regular is two oh four. Yeah. Uh, now that I've got over 100,000 miles on the car, I figured I'd start using premium. Yeah. But, but the electric car, though, has a backup uh, thing you can hear. It goes beep, 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 beep. I go, oh, God, I have to listen to that thing backing up. That's the only thing you can hear. Out of well, that, have that. Just, My forklift has it. You know, it's just but, a safety but, thing. But there's still, those electric cars are just too damn quiet. you got to make a noise or something. A rattle or something, yeah, you, know, it, you can hear it. I agree it's with that. Damn, it, it's just too darn quiet. You you always make a lot of noise. Well, I mean, it should have some kind of noise. So that, you could, you no, know, it should have some kind of milk. noise for people walking across the street who don't want to get hit by a car and usually are used to hearing a car and maybe get out of the way. Right, you could hear it speed up, right, with a car. If somebody steps on the gas, you hear it, right? Yeah. With, with an electric car, it's just... Hey, hey, Bob just got run what, over. What? Bob just got what? run over by a Tesla. Uh, <laughs> how was it? We didn't hear a thing. He didn't. Right. He was very died very quietly. Well, uh, Tesla's. Uh, you know, it, it's it's had some great technology. That uh, new one. Uh, they said that uh, if you ordered one today, it would take eighteen months to get. And uh, you have to put a thousand dollars down. Uh, my my buddy uh, Michael uh, put a thousand down on one. Uh, about There's no guarantee that Tesla's. Ago. No guarantee Tesla's gonna. This could kill Tesla. They say. Really. I read an article on it saying that this 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 car could actually kill Tesla. Kill him. Wow. Uh, hi, Kevin. How are you? Say good evening to him. Okay, how you doing? Yeah. Tesla. Uh, Tesla and a number of other uh, car companies have these things called B and B1 visas. And it seems as though they're bringing in to build their plants at Mercedes and BMW and Tesla uh, brought workers from Europe to build their plants at much lower pr- uh, money. And the workers are being told in order to qualify for that visa, they have to be a supervisor. But what the expose showed was that they weren't supervisors. They were just workers uh, uh, being brought in, and they were being schooled to say that they were supervisors. Uh, it's a it's a uh, it's a special visa uh, that uh, that they're taking advantage of, and uh, and it's the car plants that are using it. I'm sorry, we only take Mastercard. Anyway, <laughs> um, so 
Or so the anyway, 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 uh, you know, I had a little bit of uh, a little bit of news. It's funny. I was watching John Oliver on uh, Sunday, and he did a wonderful. That's what you piece. sent me, huh? Yeah, that's did, what you sent me. No, the, the, the that was a couple of weeks ago. That thing that he it wasn't. Sun, I, it looked like Sunday. No, <coughs> no, you, no. I, I, I put, look I, at this. I, I don't think I put it up uh, for you. I think somebody else may have done that to you. But I put it no. up on my I put it up on my Facebook page. The thing you about. Messenger about uh, uh, Sinclair Television. Yeah, uh, yeah, you sent it to my messenger. Oh, really? Oh, well. So I also have it up on my uh, Facebook page. Uh, but no, the thing he did on Sunday, uh, he did a thing about uh, what's his name that that idiot at uh, uh, what's his name? You know, the fat, fat guy who thinks that you know what went on in Connecticut uh, at the school was didn't happen. Yeah. Oh, uh, Alex, uh, Alex, uh, Alex Jones. Uh, Alex Jones. Uh, yeah. Uh, he did a whole thing on Alex Jones. Uh, but what was the point I was going to make? Oh, yeah. But he also did a whole thing about, you know, what had happened that week with Trump and so on, because there were various things to talk about. And as the next day happened and we watched the show the next day, we don't watch it Sunday. We watch it Monday because it's too late for Marjorie to watch it. It's like 1130 at night. And uh, so we watch it the next day. And I'm watching it, and I'm going, this show is out of date already, and it's less <laughs> than 24 hours old. Uh, it, he's talking all about uh, Scaramucci and kidding about Scaramucci and uh, how uh, Reince Priebus was let go, you know. And yet we were sitting there having just gotten the news that Scaramucci had been fired. <laughs> okay. Right. So, I mean, this thing is changing so fast. You can't do a show on Sunday and have it be relevant on a Monday. Yep. I forgot about Scaramucci already. You, when you turn on the news today and you see all the crazy stuff going on, you're like, Oh, that's right. Scaramucci's gone. <laughs> you know, it, 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 you know, you got the Americans with Disability Act, and Scaramucci was uh, people called him all sorts of names, but he really just had Tourette's, and uh, <laughs> you know, and if you know, so he let through with a few expletives, but you know, he had Tourette's. So, and it's a uh, Jewish disease. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but he's not Jewish. No, he's Italian. Yeah, so but he doesn't well, deserve they live that. near the Jews. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the big thing today they had CNN on in the waiting room mm -hmm. was that, uh, you know, that somebody in the UK hacked the uh, head of uh, the, the Homeland Security, emailed him and posed as Jared Kushner. And they thought it was real at first, but it was a hacking that I, was on all day. And they I were think all, somebody like, hacked. No, somebody hacked Jared Kushner, I believe. And made him believe that there was. Uh, well, anyway, there was something like that going on. Then but, I, I saw on my phone that Donald Trump would tweet a pardon for his whole family, and it would be, you know. <laughs> I'll, know I'll tell you what he did propose today in a memo, supposedly, that uh, the Justice Department look into the operation of colleges and universities for discriminating against white people. Oh, jeez. What? Yes. <laughs> Didn't a governor pass some law in Missouri today? Uh, uh, they're calling it the Jim Crow law. And uh, it has to do with racial discrimination and uh, what uh, signifies racial discrimination. The Trump, Amer uh, the Trump administration, according to the New York Times, wants to investigate colleges for discriminating against white applicants. That's according to an internal memo. Hmm, good. Well, I'm glad he's standing well, up for us white people. God knows you know, we've had it uh, bad. They passed something in California. Was it Prop 183 or Prop 9 or 8 uh, that uh, that uh, didn't allow uh, for um, when you when uh, minorities went to college, they got special uh, a, a special uh, deal. Uh, and I guess they struck that down and then they overturned it. But it was passed by a vote of the people, even though it got overturned. Uh, was it Prop 8? Uh, Mike, do you remember uh, which I thought it was, no, it was 8 was the marriage, wasn't it? Uh, uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I forget the numbers after a while. <laughs> yeah, uh, I know. <clears throat> I think it was one. I think it was 183. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're talking it, about the universities. 
But all I'm saying, all I'm saying is, you can't even do a comedy show today and have somebody watch it by delay the next day and have it be meaningful any longer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th- that's why I'm so happy that what Oliver does for most of his show is a singular topic, and it's usually mm-hmm. something very general that they've been working on for months. You know, like well, I guess a- the comics will just have to learn how to be funny now. Well, uh, <laughs> uh, John Oliver is very funny. No, no, I'm, what I'm saying is if you can't use politics because uh, things are changing so quickly and it becomes irrelevant, then they're just going to have to learn to be funny, you know, like a Jack Benny or, uh, you know, so, something like that. Oh, I see. In other words, we shouldn't have any political comics. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, as long as you're telling me that their comedy isn't relevant. No, I'm saying it's not relevant after 24 hours. It used to be it had a shelf life for at least 24 hours. Yeah. But it doesn't because of this goddamn idiot with his fucking yeah, Saturday tweets. Saturday night's probably crawling in their grave that it'd be an off-season. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Alex, and get the, get have the... you noticed? They're making fun of his tweets now because he does, like, a dot, dot, dot. And you know how there's only so many characters? Yeah. He'll, he'll tweet again, dot, 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 and then do some more. Well, he did That's one. The, he, I can't remember what he did the other day, yeah. but he he issued something. I think it might have been it might have been the actual uh, the thing when he tweeted about uh, about transsexuals in the service, right. and then he went dot dot dot, and then it was a half hour until his next <laughs> tweet to finish it. So he and, yeah. and and the military was worried that what would come after the dot 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 was going to be that we were invading uh, uh, South uh, or North Korea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that wasn't what or, it was. Or, but everybody was sitting there. What do you there. think of this appointment of uh, Jack, uh, was it, Kelly? Uh, General yeah, Kelly? John uh, Kelly, yeah. John Kelly, yeah. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of glad that he appointed somebody that's, uh, that's powerful enough to stand up to him. And, uh, oh, you don't and know that that's true. You place. don't know that that's true. Well, you're going, no, Tim. What, what? Well, he wants, wait a minute. Let, 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 Tim, let, Tim, let Tim say something. All right. Tim? I, I, would, I would say that you got to remember I'll, I'll, when Kelly was running DHS, he pushed it to the limit and to do what Trump told him to do because he's a soldier. Yeah. Now, he's yeah. not going to put it with crap, but you can make a soldier go right up until it's almost unethical and they'll do what you tell them to Jeff, do. Jeff, so, well, it, it, like like, look, it, it, it looks like Jeff was trying to say something. Yeah. Yes, Jeff. Yeah, I think it's too early to uh, give an assessment on on he's had this job for what two days. Yeah, and everything's and he's most terrific. of these people don't have the job for three. So that's uh, the first thing he did was get rid of Scaramucci. Yeah, but any, uh, over the uh, over his expletives. I'm talking uh, to Tim. I think Scaramucci I ran. <laughs> what? I think Scaramucci Tim. ran more than anything else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anyway, Tim, what, go on with what you were saying. That it's too well, early. Well, uh, no, no, not Tim. Excuse me. Excuse the, me. The excuse me. With, excuse with, me, uh, Tim. Kelly Tim. Now. Tim. I meant Jeff. I meant Jeff. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, Jeff. No problem. You you wanted to continue with your thought. No, I think I said enough. Oh, okay, Tim. Well, the other thing with Kelly is you guys know that he knows Comey, and he supposedly reached out to Comey when Comey got fired. And offered to quit in solidarity. That's and now, if, if, I don't know if Trump knew that before, but now it's out in the open. He nah. could, he could nah. lose favor pretty quick. Yeah. You know what we should start? Uh, it, what we should start doing is having a Deadpool on people in the administration. <laughs> like how well, long? How six, long will Kelly last? If you're not six a member months. of the family, you don't six have much months. of a shot because he doesn't have any loyalty to anybody but his family. And, he, and people don't have loyalty to him except family because people part ways with him all the time. Well, see, if you're, they if, accept if, the if, jobs if, because they're, they're if, prestigious if, positions. Uh, yes, Mike, you have your hand up. Six months. This guy's going to last six months. Six months, I say maybe less. Here's the, here's the problem that he's got. The, 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 uh, the, the uh, uh, chief of staff is the guy who's like the gatekeeper to the president. All right? So you want to see the president, even if you're the secretary in the next room. You go to the chief of staff and you say, can I talk to the president? And I'll, okay, I'll see if you can. And then he takes care of it. Do you think he is, do you think any of his family 
is going to right. have to go through that process? Right. No, no. no. set up yeah. to fail. Yeah. Yeah, but, and uh, it's already talk about that already happening, that, that he's got a special list that can just walk into the door, and then the other list that he's got to adhere to to let them in the door. Yeah. You don't think he's stronger than Reince Priebus? Probably is. You know, but he's uh, not the president. We don't know how strong. Uh, we don't and, know and how at strong. At the end of the day, the president can turn around and say, "You know what? I'm tired of your shit." Or he can turn around and say, "I'm tired of your shit," and walk away. We oh, don't. don't there's no reason why he wouldn't do that. We don't. Uh, know he how, can. We but don't. Uh, there's other good things happening today. Look at the new appointment for Wait, FBI you're, director. You're, you're changing the like discussion. You're changing the discussion, Phil. We're, well, it's, on, we're it's on one thing, more... and then we'll go to another. All right. You know. I think that they, one of the things that I heard was is that, uh, uh, you know, he's going to have a real problem where, where uh, uh, the family is concerned, that they are going to have access to him. We also have another factor going on here, and that's the revelation that uh, Trump dictated Jared Kushner's Oh, excuse me, uh, Donald Trump Jr.'s oh, excuse yeah, of yeah. why he talked to the Russians. Right. And, and he it, lied about and it. And it was a complete lie. And if we can prove that, that's an impeachable offense because that's of subverting justice. He already Absolutely. lied about it, saying he was he didn't do it. Now they caught him in that lie. Yeah. And yeah. then and then Sarah oh, Huckabee got Sarah. up there and backed it up. His attorney hey. was the one that said he, he didn't do it. There's one thing Trump is right, dedicated Sarah to. Sarah Huckabee said today at the press conference that any he, father would do it. Well, wait a minute. Did he say that he did? She say that he did it. I think yeah, so. She, Sarah yeah, Huckabee. Any, any father would. Yeah. Any father would. Well, yeah, he yeah. isn't any father. He happens to be president of the United States, and he can't uh, subvert justice. Yes, That's right, uh, Charlene. No. How long does everyone think this? Uh, Huckabee. She's got three names. Huckabee something, right? Sarah Huckabee Sanders. 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 Yeah, Why she's married she to Bernie. She's married to Bernie Sanders, Sanders. In case most people don't know, uh, what was that? She's the daughter of uh, Mike Huckabee. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was something like that. Yeah. But how long do we think she's going to last? Well, she's lasted a while. You know, I mean, she yes. she she was there with Sean Spicer, and she did some of the press conferences when Spicer oh. couldn't do it on a particular day or whatever. And uh, uh, she's been there for quite a while. They seem to did like you hear, her. She, did she you hear her answers from a script? Did you hear she her response? A script answer. Yeah. Did you hear her response to the uh, the the, the uh, uh, one of the reporters and something about you know the, the chaos in the White House and all that? And she said, "No, you don't know chaos. Have have three toddlers running around your house." Yeah. Come by and 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 it's like really. Yeah, so we're comparing we're comparing the White House now to toddlers. Or a day kid. Yeah. 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 And, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, good, they, uh, Trump. Good comparison. <laughs> uh, it is good comparison. <laughs> There's one thing that's consistent of, about Trump. He tweets early in the morning, right? Yeah. Between three and six. It's odd to me. That that's it's noon in Russia, in Moscow it's noon at that time, so we know how good the Russians are at putting fake news out through the tens of th the thousands of people they had on as fake Twitter accounts and so on. What if what if what if he is being blackmailed and he's getting substance for his tweets from Moscow because it's so consistent? You know, they 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 look at the events from the prior day. They have until noon, and then it's 6 o'clock here this morning, and then he tweets. It's almost too consistently at the same time. It's kind of spooky. Can you think his tweets are monetized? No, no, I think his I, tweets I, are being fed to him no, by you, Putin, because he wants, Putin is the guy that wants the chaos. That's what's going to destroy our democracy. Putin Trump is going to make more chaos. great again. I don't think I have, uh, yes, uh, 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 Jeff. Did anyone listen to uh, Chris Matthews tonight? No. At the end of his show, he did a discussion between Trump and our former president who got arrested and in all kinds of trouble, um, Nixon. Yeah. And, and he went one by one on a whole bunch of issues, and it sounds like they're, they're both on the same book. So Richard Milhouse Trump. <laughs> <Yeah>. Oh, God. 
<laughs> with Cher. It was scary. The only trouble was there was a difference. There was a difference between Nixon and Trump to begin with. Nixon had a great deal of respect for the office. Yeah. You know, and which, he, he had a brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, and 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 he knew law. He knew and law. And he did do some decent things. I mean, he opened up uh, trade with China, for instance. Opened up a dialogue with China, which up until that time was unheard of. Uh, you know, uh, when you go back and you look at Nixon, Nixon, for instance. Uh, passed a, uh, an a executive order, may have, uh, yeah, an executive order saying that he wanted uh, billions of dollars uh, to go to cancer funding uh, because he said, we can cure cancer in our lifetime. Uh, so there were things he did that were good. I can't name a single thing that Trump has done that's been mm. what I consider sensational. Yeah. Right, right. And he, he still hasn't signed... Putin. He has pens to it. And he still hasn't signed the bill that Congress and the Senate passed, like, 98... Oh, 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 they're working on a signing statement. He's drafting a signing statement. Yeah, he signed shit like, uh, he'll sign bubblegum cards if you let him. This he won't sign. Which bill? Yeah, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna do a lot of puffery for Putin in a signing statement. Tim, what you you're right, though. Right, so. So, yeah, he's going to give him bubblegum cards to sign, that's it. Yeah, how do you yeah. feel about... How do, how, do you you know, uh, how do you sign my name? Phil, how do you feel about that? The fact that uh, he's uh, kind of really slow to sign this uh, Russia thing. Uh, uh, well, he probably doesn't want to, but uh, what is a signing statement? What, uh, Tim? Uh, it can modify uh, some of the, some of the oh, signing Oh, I know, I know what say, it is. Yeah, I've heard, I've go heard ahead, it too. Go yeah. ahead. Basically, it's, basically it's, a, it's something thing. he signs that he'll like the he'll sign the bill, but then say. But uh, I don't personally believe in it, or I, you know, am I right, Tim? That's like the, the president of the United States doesn't want to stand up for this country. Well, I, I, I have some. Well, I, you know, no one has said that the Russians are, you know, they all say that they are behind it, but no one has come up with any proof. Well, it, yeah. No, oh, wait a minute. No, I, wait a minute. I, I, I know. I know. Well, Rob just. Out, Rob, sign it. Rob just almost had a heart attack over that one. But think about it, Rob. <laughs> In some ways, Phil is right. So far, we don't have the proof that they literally Jimmy rigged the election. We suspected. It. it looks. I mean, I'm one that believes they actually did. You know, but but we don't. We don't. People in the dossier are dead already. Well, no, what no, I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, we don't have the kind of proof that you sh would normally need to take sanctions be, against a country. What well, would that be? Uh, well, fingerprints the, on a doorknob? Well, there are there are yeah. there are digital fingerprints. Yes. You, you, you know, know who has the proof? It's Mueller. But he's not going to release. Mueller's had no leaks, so you know he's got some juicy stuff. Uh, there's rumors. Have, there's there's sealed indictments already. No, but I, 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 no, I understand no, what Phil is. Phil, nothing, there's nothing there. I understand what Phil is trying to say. Oh, the only thing is that when the dust clears, we will find a definite link between Russia and our election, yeah. and we I, will I, find I, a definite link not only between uh, 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 Russia and our election, but between Donald Trump and Russia. Well, think about this, Alex. I I just preface this by saying I was for Bush's intervention in Iraq, both of them, and but Why? The, uh, let me let me get to the next point. Uh, because Donald he's Trump Phil, that's not, why. And, and Donald Trump said that the, there was no proof of WMDs, and obviously he was right. And he said that he wouldn't have gone into Iraq based on the information that uh, we were provided uh, by the government. Now, he's, he's doing the same kind of behavior with the Russians. He's saying, hey, look, there's no proof. I'm not going to basically invade uh, or, or condemn until, until there's proof. And, I, you know, I see that yeah, as but a can you effect. Can you understand our suspicion of Trump because we so believe that he has been in league with the Russians as far as this election was concerned that he's trying to stop any investigation into it and the reason he must be trying to stop the investigation it just looks suspicious just like the Russians uh, uh, Jimmy rigging our elections look suspicious it looks suspicious like he's trying to hide something he's trying it's to interfere of guilt he's trying in a, law, in a court of law it's consciousness of guilt he's, and it's, it's yeah. a legal term yeah 
Yes, Rob. No, Rob. It's the same. Can I explain? It's just the same kind of thought process that he used with Iraq. That he's no, using different different this. kind of process. Here he's trying to save his own ass and that of his hey, sons. And all he's got to do exactly. is cooperate. Stop lying. Stop being caught in all these little fibs. You know, every time you turn on the TV, White House misleads on misleading Trump Jr. statement. That's the 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 banner across it CNN right on now. Station you're listening to. Oh, you, well, yeah. The, 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 <laughs> the how about the how about the one uh, where Fox News and the White House got together and put together a phony story? Oh, yes. story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about that? That's what you're watching. Uh, tell, that was tell, the, uh, Seth Rich. The, yeah. That was about That's what the. You're watching. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, I don't watch. That somebody <laughs> in the DNC hey, was Phil? was murdered. Yeah. 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 For letting for using WikiLeaks to let out the emails or something. Yeah, that's uh Butkowski, whatever his name is, uh that rich guy. Butkowski. Yeah. Whatever. Butkowski, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the network uh, that the conservatives watch. That's why well, they're not I, seeing the truth. CNN made a lot of apologies too, you know, uh on on uh, a number of uh things that they reported. But uh, uh Tim wanted to say something and I spoke over him. Yes. Tim, oh, oh, we just have a pattern of proof of Putin doing this in all the other countries, too. It's, it's, it's well known that he's done this, and he wants been wanting to do it here for years. And uh, they, they do have proof that he hacked, they hacked into registration systems, not changing the votes, but they, they were affecting whether people could you, vote by messing but, up some of the registration. Tim, do you think our registration system was vulnerable because of the... Oh, absolutely, uh, absolutely uh, vulnerable. Yeah. And yeah, because people... Just, um, just took advantage you know, of... If the, if the White House can be taken in by a basic first grade email scam. So if you ball. rob a if you rob a bank because the lock was a little bit vulnerable, then the robber should get away with it. I mean no. the bank didn't do a good job. No, but right. you you don't you don't make it e if you make it easy for them. People then it's okay will, to do. Then it's okay not, to no, do. Said it's okay. It's just that it it happens because uh, it's it's they're vulnerable. <laughs> You know, uh, and we're using we're using two, uh, 2000 and 2002 computer systems, Diebold and so forth. Beside the point. It's well, beside the point. Whether we whether we left the doors open and they did it or we had the most secure system in the world and they found uh, found a way to hack that. It's inconsequential. 16 if they year old did it. kids do it. They, they, it doesn't they matter. Get in. Why? Why don't we just. Change our system around, make it more secure. Get rid of all this other crap what we have now. Well, they they need, it. they need to, and I, I know they're working on it. That, uh, my ex-wife is working for a company that is creating new software for uh, for elections. It better be because if the if the country loses faith in in the uh, the election system, that's the end of this country. Straight up, uh, nobody can, will. Can somebody explain to me why we can have tens of millions of ATMs? worldwide that transfer money and money transactions to the penny trillions every day and we can't have a decent voting system because those make systems, any sense. systems are current and the voting system uh, and the software and hardware that's being used is not current so then it must it, be a top priority to keep it that way to make well, it current if they, they do it, get hacked they do get hacked we get a, we have elections every year. It's not a presidential election. But the the systems that most of the states are using are uh, seventeen years old. Okay, and so that needs no to be changed. Patches. What? There are Why don't we change it for the software? That should be money coming from the federal government, mandated down to the states to get state of the art equipment. Because I don't care. We're, they're part, every state is part of this union. And mm -hmm. if, right. if we don't have a, an election process that we can believe in, we don't have a country. We don't have a federal government. We don't have state governments. We got shit. No, somebody working for the state of Georgia in the Elections Commission on his lunch hour wrote a program and downloaded all of the voter records. He didn't use them for a nefarious reason. He wanted to see whether he could hack into it, and he did uh, within a couple of hours. And Again, he did that at one of the, uh, the, the electronic conventions this week too they hacked in on stage in the voting hacking, system hacking convention what's it called um there's um, some sort of there's a lot yeah, of them out the, there hackers that do good things they try to let companies know that yeah. they have vulnerabilities 
They're in all these industries. Hire these hackers. Right, uh, absolutely. And, and, and there was a convention just recently, I think last week, <clears throat> where they uh, where they had them all uh, uh, trying to uh, infiltrate. I'm telling you, they're doing it with automobiles as well. There are co there are guys out there who can hack into automobiles through car radios, through mm -hmm. different on yeah. star and this and that. For and your, they, your they could they could crash you. They could do whatever the hell they want. And they go to one the journalist. Companies. One one journalist was killed that way. We think at least Jordan's um, um, husband or, or fiance was killed that way. He was into a big story in his car crash. He tried to borrow a friend's car. They wouldn't let him borrow it because he was like par he was getting paranoid. And his car crashed. They couldn't explain why it crashed, but they think he was hacked. Probably. It's easy enough to do. Yeah, look up Elise Jordan and then her boyfriend's uh, as a reporter too. Uh, the point is, is what Rob was saying is that yeah, you can do it, but you shouldn't doesn't make it. Well, yeah, and also, we really as a, as the federal government to protect this govern to protect our the sanctity of our country should. To put some money aside and give it to every state and tell them, use this money to bulletproof your elections. Didn't, didn't they say that the uh, hacking also occurred in the 2012 election uh, as well as the 2016? So maybe this vulnerability has been has existed for a while, but oh, we sure. weren't aware of people taking advantage of that vulnerability. Well, the question is, wait, 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 hold, hold, hold on a second. The question is, where does the hacking begin? You know, I mean... Uh, if you say that these machines are so old, I don't think that the problem, we just lost Tim for some reason, uh, the, uh, the, the, the problem with hacking an election using the old systems is to begin with, the only thing you're going to be able to hack is the link between the polling place and wherever they report to and whatever method they use to report that, because that's the only time you're really going to be able to hack something. Vulnerable. Yeah. Because right at the site, I don't think there's enough computer power going on there to, to hack that. You know. I would agree. But, you know, yeah. Sony, I mean, you would agree with someone who's into, in, into, 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 Rob, into, into computers. When I go to my polling place, it's very low tech. They You go yeah. and you fill out a ballot with a piece of paper with, a paper and a pencil, you fill in the bullets, and then you go into a machine, and it's where that machine uploads to the, you know, it's just a machine that I think yeah. photocopies but really your ballot or somewhere whatever Somewhere between the upload and where it goes is where the hacking's got to be done. Right. Absolutely. And I don't know There's if that, like I don't. Sony. When when they, can, will you let me finish what I'm saying, Phil? I was talking. Uh, uh, the question is, what do you hack between the polling place and the place it reports? And how do you change that in the process? Uh, especially when you're using such old-fashioned computer stuff, which may be harder to hack than, say, the newer computer stuff. Who knows? Do they even use VPNs in between? You, you would think they would. Yeah, you would think so. Now, Phil. Yes. Uh, well, okay. You know, uh, recently, last year or two years ago, uh, we, we had that uh, Korea movie uh, where uh, they made fun of Kim Jong-un. And uh, uh, what ended up happening was, didn't Sony get hacked right after that? Uh, yes. And uh, they released a whole bunch of stuff, and, it, and they thought it was the Koreans that did it. No, they know, uh, they know it was the Koreans that did it. Right. So, so the, this hacking could be coming from the Russians, it could be coming from the Koreans, and it could be coming from the Chinese and the Iranians and, and a number of other... It could be sources. coming from the Trump administration. <laughs> I'm sure that's it is. True. But, I, I uh, mean, that's, then, that, that's, you know, the, that's the one possibility we have never explored, and that's the, the hacking of this election might have been done internally by people of favor to the Trump administration. It's a possibility. I mean, but after all, some of his, some of, some of, some of Trump Trump's big fans, oh, wait a minute, some of the Trump's big fans are like, uh, I can't remember the guy's name down in Silicon Valley, who has access to all this computer power, who could have done it sure. on his own. Yes, but th think about these other ones that happened long before Trump was running for the president. The, the, the Pentagon got hacked. Uh, Visa, Yahoo, uh, millions you know of got, names, you know who social just, security you, numbers. You know who got hacked? They just, who, uh, the most recent you? hack? H <laughs> no, HBO. Oh, H yeah. HBO got hacked by some people who said they uploaded uh, episodes of, of upcoming episodes and scripts right. for Game of Thrones 
that right. they were going to yeah. release them unless uh, they were paid and a they certain released amount of spoilers. money. Didn't they release spoilers? They didn't release them, no. Uh, there was uh, something no, yesterday they, in the they, news. They said they uh, would. They said they, they said they would. Oh, okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's been a number of incursions, <laughs> you know, you know. Over, whether it be uh, whether it be Visa, uh, you know, or and and Home Depot and, and, and a number of Target. Uh, all of these okay. retailers have yeah. been hacked and, and vital information has been uh, compromised. Yeah. Yes, Rob. You know, it cracks me up. You're talking about hacking HBO and releasing, you know, spoilers on Game of Thrones. They didn't do it, but we'll release secrets, you know, sensitive secrets. They'll release them like crazy, but whoa, hey, we can't mess with Game of Thrones. Yeah. That's funny. Why didn't they release the Game of Thrones things? That's really funny. Well, you know something? I can't remember who I was talking to who said their company got hacked and yeah. that it was a ransomware thing. And they didn't pay it, you know, but they, they were trying to get yeah. them to pay something like, you know, $100,000. in. Wasn't uh, there a Bitcoin thing where they wanted $300 from every company? And uh, that didn't yeah. go over very big. But, well, uh, well, no, they, 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 they deal in Bitcoin on these deals, on these ransomware things. But I don't even understand how Bitcoin works, but, but I guess it's not traceable. Well, I guess if you got two bits. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it, uh, it, it's, it, it's, cents. it's scary. Yes, uh, Mike. Why don't they do every four years change change everything around? Expensive. You know, I know it's expensive, but they got to do it. Yeah. Change the program every time. That way you keep ahead of the, you know, mm -hmm. of the hackers. Right? Am I correct, should, Rob? Here comes. Just here, hire by the hackers. way. By the way, it. we've been joined by Renee. Hello, Renee, all the way from Hawaii. Hello, Renee. Hey, hey. so the Phil, darling, lovely. Are you flawless? <laughs> uh -oh. Yeah. Number one, uh -oh. I've only I've only had one beer. Number two, did you read the hackathon information that came out that's, this week? That's what I was trying to think of. The hackathon. Thank you very much, right. Renee. And, and they hacked into the state-run voter system. Right. Please note, I said state-run because that's what Phil and the Republicans like. The states are in charge of their health care. <laughs> the states are in charge of their roads. The states are in charge of their school. If your state has a shitty voter registration situation, it's because of a Republican said that the state was responsible for it. Amen. That we <laughs> the way we lost the Oh, let's everybody everybody stand up and applaud. Yay! <laughs> it's the Republicans. They yep, it people. is the Republicans. They They're do everything people. wrong. You <laughs> Republicans do everything wrong. Well, you know, you were talking exactly. you were you were talking about You were ta trying to talk about the last couple of elections uh, being hacked. But right. the fact was that Obama, in his second election, got won by so many votes and so, yeah. uh, so many electoral votes that there was, uh, hacking wouldn't have changed the outcome at all. That's true. It's just that uh, it may have changed the outcome of other, uh, other lo what, what Amy calls lower ticket or lower candidate and My election. question is, if you're Russia, and, and Rob, Rob is like the tech guy here. I mean, he knows more about this, I think, probably technically than the rest of us here. Uh, if you're going to hack, are you going to go to that low a level to hack? I mean, it's not it's not easy to hack, and you have to go, you know. I think, I think you'd be surprised how easy it is to hack some of these things. Think about this. When 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 who what movie just re or what series got hacked recently? Game of Thrones. The, Thrones. Game of Thrones got hacked recently. It didn't get hacked at the studio level. It didn't get hacked at the actor level. It went all the way down the line to the voiceover people, and somebody was saying went down the line and said, "Oh, look." <laughs> A vulnerability right here. If we attack th at this at this level, then we can affect it all the way up. 
it is it, the same it, state. In other words, shit. you're looking, you're looking, you're looking for the for the vulnerability, and you're going in through that hole. You're only as good as your weakest link in security. And that's, what, that's what the Russians did. Once they're in, they got the keys. Absolutely. So that's but the Rob, way it is. But if we have, or that's what the 400 pound guy on his bed did. Yeah. Well, yes, yes, Mike. Wait a minute, Mike wants to say. It wouldn't have happened. Mike wants to say something. Okay, Mike, Rob, since yeah. you're the techie guy. Why could why couldn't they change it every year, every so often? It depends you know, they, on what you're talking about changing. I mean, think about the cost involved. What do you what when you say yeah. change it? What do you mean change it? You mean throw out all the technology and bring in fresh new technology? They have to be they have to be as vigilant as major corporations like the banking system is and maintain this network all the time. They can't just flip it on. And expect it to be yeah, and expect it to be secure. They have to maintain right. it. Somebody has to be in charge of it to patch it, to watch for vulnerabilities, to upgrade wherever they find vulnerabilities. Keep con- that's what that's what businesses do. That's what banks do. If you're not going to do that, then you're you're going to be like Swiss cheese. You know that's the way it is. It is. Did did the bank get some bank get hacked or something? Well, it happens, you know. But that typically. You no, know, I think they were doing a ransom. Once in a while, I mean, look, again, you're only as good. This is what we preached. I don't care. If you're going to write your password down, if you're going to be a worker in a company, and we've got all this high-tech security, we're protected. If you're going to write your password down next to your monitor on how to get in, or you're going to switch passwords with somebody else, hey, my password is 123XYZ, do me a favor. And if you're going to do that, we might as well not have security. Well, I'll tell you, when I, was security. Working at, when I was working at Sirius XM, uh, uh, the most annoying thing that could possibly have kept going on, but I understand the reason for it, was every month they made us password. change our passwords. Right. And Absolutely. you could, you yeah. know. Uh, can I ask Rob a question? Yeah. Rob has a uh, some sort of password key that he yeah. uses. Are you still using that, and is I, it effective? Absolutely. I, I, what's, I, what's it called? Called one password. Okay. One, the number one password. Yeah. I have it on my Mac. I have it on my phone, my iPhone. I have it on my Android. I have it on my PC. It's. I keep all my passwords. They, there's a vault on my Dropbox, and it's secure there. And every machine I have connects to it, so I don't know what my banking passwords are. I don't know any of these passwords. They're all crazy long sets of characters. You're never going to hack it. Yeah. But, well, but, I, but what I, happens? I re- now, do you pay password? One password? I pay him once. I paid him once, and uh, that's it. I, I, I uh, you know, I only paid. I think it was like seventy bucks or something like that. And and and, I, and, and, and is, does this stuff reside on their computers? No, no. I download their software to each of my devices. Yeah. And the stuff resides. The the vault resides in my Dropbox. It's a hash protected. It's it's only a you know it's just a database. Nobody would be able to figure it Suppose out anyway. Suppose something goes wrong with Dropbox, just because Dropbox runs from a central server. Right. So suppose something goes bad with Dropbox. Then well, I have a, uh, there's a local cache on my machine as well, which updates. All my machines have local caches, and they upgrade, uh, they update every time. Okay. I ch- if I change a password here on my Mac, when I use my work computer over there in the corner, yeah. and I need one password, it updates it, so it's it's cached locally. In fact, that happened to me. I, I deleted I my vault by mis- I deleted my vault by mistake one day, and I, sh- I I was like panicked. But I remembered that I went to my Mac and I opened up one password, and all my passwords were still there, so I was able to resync it back. Oh, okay. I don't use cash. I, I use a debit card for almost everything. There yeah. you go. <laughs> Uh, I've always it's wanted. A great, to just wanted it was a great program. I, mean, I really I recommend it. One password. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I've got so many passwords oh. I can't remember them. I have to say forgot the password. Then you got to right. come up with something unique. I'm running out of the usual suspects. And that's <laughs> the problem: usual suspects. So your yeah. banking password is a usual suspect. Yes. So if they hack one, then they're going to try all of everything they've got with your name on it. My banking password could be like. 15 characters and it's characters, letters, numbers in any crazy order. Never going to hack that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I don't care if anybody, uh, as I've said before, I, 
I don't care if anybody steals my identity because I have no life, so they won't have one either. You know. So. <laughs> but they'll have your thirty-two cents. Yeah. I just never understood how those things work, and never had the balls to go out and just buy one and do it because. I'm in the same position. I can't remember it, but I don't understand how they work. So it's also yeah, that it's, a, it's also simple. it's also Let that your uh, the, the services you use are now getting draconian about the passwords you use. Right. You right. know, you must use uh, one capital letter plus you've got you know. Right. And I always used to have one password for everything. Just that's one really, password. Really for everything. Really bad. Well, I, you're I saying that's bad, but numbers. I but that I've I've never been hacked. What are you holding up there? Uh, uh, Four ninety nine. Renee. It's a. Uh, uh, is that uh, what they? It's charge the family. Now? Oh, so that's a monthly fee that they will charge you. I didn't buy it per month. I bought it outright. Okay, but that was the family plan, and you can try it for free for thirty days. Yeah. So. But, but if you they have passwords back after plans. thirty days, I don't know. pay anything. And so what happens you know, when something comes up that needs a password? It automatically puts it in. What happens is. I can do one of two things. If I want to go to my if I want to go to my bank website or a, any website that I have stored, I can either open the password vault and choose what browser I want it to open. It opens it, puts the password in, and logs it in. Most times I don't do it that way. Most times I go to my bank password, I right click, and I choose one password because there's a plug-in for every browser. Mm -hmm. I right click, choose, and then I, it automatically knows that I'm on that website. So it, I cl once I click on the name. When I right click on the name of the like, you know, Bank of America, it automatically populates the fields and logs you in. Oh. And then if you need something, if you need the password for some reason, there have been a few times when I actually needed the password, then you can right click and reveal and it'll show it to you. Or you can right click and choose copy and then paste it somewhere or whatever. There are different things, but you could also keep credit cards in there so they're handy and they're you know, I keep my credit card information in there as well. well I have to look at it. It's called one password. One the number one password. Yep, one password. Yeah, it's definitely the number one password. <laughs> oh any No, one no, the, the no. numeral one. Okay. Numeral one. Yeah, one. Huh. One. 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 So let's take a can, if we one. can take a step back. No one ever we hardly ever talk about Estonia. And I think Estonia is very important in this whole election issue because pardon me, pardon they're me. the Renee, country. Renee, actually, Renee, yes. Renee, where is it? Where is Estonia? <laughs> yeah. Well, see, I'm in a unique position to say that way. <laughs> <laughs> so I can go either direction. I used to and be. It'll a... take me a long time. I used to go with. A, I used I to go. I used to go out with a woman from Estonia, and her name was Tiu Luke. And when you yeah. hear that name, you think it's like Asian, but it isn't. It's Estonian. But anyway, so what? what's happening in Estonia? I haven't been paying attention. They've actually had a ATM style or an online voter uh, voting system for the past, I don't know, six, maybe eight years now. Yeah. And they've never been hacked. They put the money into it. Pardon me? They're probably the hackers. Yeah, they, <laughs> either that or nobody cares. Well, that, I was going to say that. You know, I mean, uh, <laughs> Apple used to be very proud to say nobody hacks Apple machines. Well, they didn't because if you hack PCs, you've got ninety percent of the world you can affect, and you're right. you're only affecting like seven percent of the time. world with Apple. Okay, <laughs> so why would a, a hacker waste his time on an Apple? That was the only protection Apple actually had. There was a vulnerability patch that Apple came up with last week. Yeah. I guess uh, the, there was some sort of security issue, yeah. and uh, you, you had to download the new patch. That's one of the first ones that uh, that they've had. You know? Yeah. Uh, no, they haven't, but they, they don't the, have them. Once in a while, they have them. <laughs> yeah, but but how, does a, how does a third world country have online voting and every and then 50 percent of america sit there and say no we can't do that now we just can't do you that know, now. most of the european countries have better cell service than than we have okay let me uh, let me let me, let me, smaller, let me try and answer her question though and i yeah. and, and rob follow me on this and see if i'm wrong on this i think the reason it's easier for estonia is because perhaps they were a little bit late to the table to the computer age and yeah. so they got into it late enough that all their stuff is far more modern 
And right. what the trouble is, our infrastructure has a lot of new stuff, but it has a lot of old stuff too. And so it, it, does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Does that make sense, Rob? Yeah, and also think how big, how many moving parts in our election system. I'll bet it's, you know, their election system is maybe smaller than one of our small states. Yeah, but but it's the same It's the same situation. You no, start no, here, you yeah. break it down but here. Yeah, but, it, it, yeah, no, but if you had this tiny election little system, okay. their election system is if you don't vote for the guy that Putin wants to win, they chop your head off. If, if, you're, <laughs> if, you, if you have... If you have a small network to manage, it's a lot easier than managing a huge 50-state network. And also, 50 states plus all of the different districts that connect well, in. Also, so you're, a ha you're a hacker. What are you going to hack? The United <laughs> States, where with one hack you, you, you literally affect hundreds of millions of people? Or are you going to hack Estonia? Where, you know, it's, it's, it's insignificant by comparison. It's the same as, yeah. like, going after PCs rather than apples. Yeah, you, you know. can't really Yeah, but that's, that's not the point, though. If you did everything Rob talked about that the corporations actually do mm -hmm. to keep their ATM machines safe, to keep, their, uh, keep your credit card safe when you go to the gas station, things like that, we would, there's no reason we couldn't be on computers voting now. There's Everything really no reason except for money. And the only reason that's an issue is because it's done at the state level. That's right. The states are responsible for their own systems, and that and, needs and to change. Why the fuck with, right. Right. If you can manipulate the system, you won't want it changed. Again, but if you're the, the, weakest, the weakest link, right, is your, is your end point. So I don't care if it's Rhode Island. I don't care what state it is. If you don't have, if everybody's not on board the same way, you're screwed, right? Once they're in, they're in. But I will so, still, I will still go back to Phil with one thing and give him credit for that, and that is we have yet to, without question, prove that Russia did a hack. I, I, we're sure of it. You know, we we believe it happened, but to take sanctions against a country until you have proof positive. R rather, so those, rather, those, remember, those, ra no, but what we're doing is, we, we're we, sure that, hold on a second, uh, Phil, 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 let me make your case for you, please. Right. Uh, <laughs> the <laughs> the so fact is, is that, that, no, the fact is <laughs> that, that uh, the, we don't know that the hacks 100% came from Russia, okay, and until we do, to take sanctions against them seems to be a bit wrong. What's, what's the percentage that's success acceptable? A well, percentage is acceptable is that we can find that digital fingerprint that puts it right at their front door, and that we can do that. But let's do it. But you know, you're 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 missing the po you're missing a small point here. Those sanctions were not for the ha technically they were the sanctions that were put in place from Obama the Obama administration for for other crimes that like Russia Syria, was like Syria. It was a tit right. for tat. Uh, this, no. This, uh, this is just a, re a reinstatement of those sanctions. So this sanction thing that they just did was not because Russia did the half. Wasn't this was the just a reinstatement invasion of, of Ubekistan or something. Uh, what, what country did they invade? Uh, that uh, you know, and then they. I mean, there are a lot of other election. reasons to take what sanctions against. Have them. they ever got into? But and, 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 Kevin, I'm sorry for stepping on you, for talking over you. I apologize about that. Yes, but, uh, 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 Charlene but, has, but, a, has a comment to make here. Yes, Charlene. Well, you know, someone, uh, a gentleman before mentioned, you know, other countries and all this. And, Renee, you're talking about that. Something happened in Venezuela today or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That? Well, that's it. The, the, well, they literally fixed the election down there. And uh, right. they want to change the Constitution to make it really a totalitarian state. You know, so uh, it's not uh, it's not wonderful what's happening in Venezuela, but then they haven't had a very good record of electing people. You and know? we've sanctioned them, and they're pissed at us. Or something, it was pretty right? much a totalitarian state before. Uh, but uh, the, but the it still it had a, it had a constitution, and it was a democracy technically. Technically, <laughs> now it's not going to be at all. Hey, we've not run either. out of time here. <laughs> good discussion tonight, Phil. Thank you, Charlene. Good to see you again. Jeff, 
<laughs> always nice to have you there. I always feel warm and fuzzy when you're on the screen. Renee thank Collins, you. thank you. Mike, thank you. Rob, the, a good thanks for the technical stuff tonight. And uh, Kevin, thank you as well. Why doesn't everybody wave goodbye and then we can call this thing uh, 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 a thing? Okay, bye-bye, everybody. Bye. We'll see you later. <laughs> okay, that's it. Let me get rid of uh, all of them. Oh, uh, they want to know, how's the overall quality, says uh, Skype. Well, the overall quality is, is uh, quality. Hey, that's it for us tonight. We're all through. They we ain't going to do no more. I'm Alex Bennett. We'll see you again tomorrow night. Uh, stay tuned for Jack and Amy. They're next with the intersection. And then at uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, uh, by delay, uh, Connections. Uh, in the meantime, I'm Alex Bennett. See you tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. <laughs>